let's look at absolute extrema so let's say we have a graph which goes like this okay and if you notice these are the points at which the slope is zero so these are these will be relative maxima and minima but when it comes to absolute extrema if we restrict the interval to say this these two points then this would be the absolute minima and this would be the absolute maxima okay so to figure out this absolute maxima and minima in a given interval we have to first figure out the points at which the slope is zero and then figure out uh, the uh, using the second derivative which is the maximum and the minimum okay let's solve some problems we have a function f of x equal to minus x square by 2 minus 4 x minus 3 and we have to figure out the absolute maximum minima in the interval minus 4 to minus 1 okay so f prime of x is going to be minus 2x by 2 minus 4 2 2 cancels and we have minus x minus 4 now let's equate it to 0 to figure out the points at which the slope is 0 so minus x equal to 4 x equal to minus 4 and this minus 4 belongs to this closed interval minus 4 minus 1 okay so we have found a point where the slope is 0 that means it is going to be either a maxima or a minima in this interval so for that let's figure out the second derivative f double prime of x is equal to we have to differentiate this minus 1 so which means this is going to be concave down that means minus 4 let's figure out f of minus 4 which gives us minus minus 4 square by 2 minus 4 times minus 4 minus 3 which gives us minus 16 by 2 is 8 plus 4 for 16 minus 3 which gives us 8 minus 3 which is 5 so minus 4 comma 5 is going to be the absolute maxima okay now one end point is the maxima right there is no other points between these two minus 4 and minus 1 where the uh, slope is 0 so that means minus 1 is going to be the minimum so let's figure out f of minus 1 that is going to be minus minus 1 square by 2 minus 4 times minus 1 minus 3 which gives us minus 1 by 2 plus 4 minus 3 which gives us minus half plus 1 which is half minus 1 comma half is going to be absolute minimum f of x is equal to x square plus 1 in the interval minus 2 comma 0 f prime of x is equal to 2x equating it to 0 we get x equal to 0 which belongs to the closed interval minus 2 comma 0 and again this is one of the end points where the slope is 0 so let's figure out what the second derivative is second derivative would be 2 because we have to differentiate this and this is positive that means this is concave up so therefore this point that is 0 comma f of x would be what 0 plus 1 that is 1 is going to be the absolute minimum okay now that is the only point at which the slope is 0 so that means the other end point will be the maxima f of minus 2 is equal to minus 2 square plus 1 which is equal to 4 plus 1 which is 5 so therefore minus 2 comma 5 is going to be the absolute 
maxima. Let's look at the third one. F of x is equal to minus x square by 2 minus 1 in the interval minus 3, 1. Okay, f prime of x is equal to minus 2x by 2. 2, 2 cancels and we are left with minus x. Equating it to 0, we get x equal to 0. And 0 belongs to this interval, right? And most importantly, comparing it to the previous two problems, it is not one of the n points. So, f of 0 is equal to minus 1. So, the point 0, comma minus 1 is going to be the point at which the slope is 0. Now, we have to figure out whether it is concave up or concave down. So, f double prime of x is equal to minus 1. Differentiating this, which is negative. So, it is going to be concave down. That means this is going to be the absolute maxima. Now, since there are no other uh, points at which the slope is 0, how do we figure out the minima? Basically, we evaluate both points, minus 3 and 1. So, f of minus 3 is going to be minus, minus 3 square by 2 minus 1 which gives us minus 9 by 2 minus 1 which gives me minus 11 by 2 and the other end point that is 1 minus 1 square by 2 minus 1 which gives me minus 1 by 2 minus 1 which is minus 3 by 2. Now just figure out which is the smaller which is the greater so here this comes to minus 1.5 this comes to minus 5.5 this is smaller so that means this is going to be that is minus 3 comma minus 11 by 2 is going to be the absolute minima look at the fourth one f of x is equal to 2x square plus 16x plus 33 in the interval minus 5 to minus 3. Okay. F prime of x will be 4x plus 16. Let's equate it to 0. We get 4x equal to minus 16, x equal to minus 4. And this belongs to this interval minus 5 minus. Okay. So, f of minus 4 will be 2 times minus 4 square plus 16 minus 4 plus 33. When you evaluate it, you get 1. So, minus 4 comma 1 is going to be either maxima or minima. To figure out which one, let's take the derivative once more. So, 4x plus 16 if we differentiate it, we get 4, which is positive. Since it is positive, this is going to be absolute minima. Okay. Now, what about the maxima? For that, we look at the endpoints. Minus 5 and minus 3. So, f of minus 5. Remember, we are not taking f double prime of minus 5. We are taking of the function itself. So, f of minus 5 is going to be 2 times minus 5 square plus 16 times minus 5 plus 33. If we evaluate it, we get 3. So, therefore, the point is going to be minus 5 comma 3. Now, f of the other uh, end point is minus 3. So, 2 times minus 3 square plus 16 minus 3 plus 33. If we evaluate it, we get again 3. Okay. So, the point would be minus 3 comma 3. Since f of x for both these two points is same, that means 
बोथ आर एब्सल्यूट मैक्सिम ओके फिफ्थ वन एफ ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस टू एक्स माइनस फोर इन द इंटरवल माइनस थ्री कॉमा माइनस वन एफ प्राइम ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू टू एक्स प्लस टू इक्वेटेड टू जीरो वी गेट टू एक्स इक्वल टू माइनस टू एक्स इक्वल टू माइनस वन and minus 1 again belongs to this closed interval minus 3 minus 2. so f of minus 1 is going to be 1 minus 2 minus 4 which is minus 5 the point minus 1 comma minus 5 is the point at which the slope is zero now let's look at the second derivative and see what happens f double prime of x is equal to Two, differentiating this, which is positive. That means it is concave up. If it is concave up, this is going to be absolute minima. Now remember, this minus was one of the endpoints. If that is the minima, and there is no other point in the curve where the slope is zero, that means the other endpoint is going to be the maxima. so other end point would be f of minus 3 is equal to this will be what what is the function x square minus 3 square plus 2 times minus 3 minus 4 which gives us 9 minus 6 minus 4 which is minus 10 so minus 1 So minus three minus one is going to be the absolute maximum. F of x is equal to minus x square by two minus x minus five by two in the interval minus four comma minus two. So f prime of x is equal to minus two x by two minus one, equating it to zero. We get minus x minus one equal to zero, minus x equal to one, x equal to minus one. Okay, and this minus one, this minus one, does not belong to the interval minus four minus two. So there is no point in the curve within this interval where the slope is zero. That means these endpoints themselves would be the maxima or minima. So Let's see. F of minus four would be minus x square by two. So minus minus four square by two minus x. So minus minus four minus five by two, which gives us minus sixteen by two. That is minus eight four minus five by two, which gives us minus four minus five by two. Which gives me minus eight minus five, so minus thirteen by. So this point is going to be minus four comma minus thirteen by two. Okay. Now what is the other end of the in, uh, interval? That is minus two. So f of minus two is going to be minus minus two square by two minus minus two minus five by, which gives us. Minus four by two. That is minus two plus two minus five by two, which gives us minus five by. Two. So the point is minus two comma minus five by two. So which of these is lower, or whichever is higher is the maximum. So here minus thirteen by two is going to be minus six point five. This is minus two point five. So this is higher. So this is going to be absolute maxima, and this is going to be absolute minima. Seventh one, f of x is equal to fifteen by x square plus five in the interval minus two comma three. Okay. 
Now we can write this as 15 times x square plus 5 to the power of minus 1. Now let's take the derivative. f prime of x is equal to minus 15 x square plus 5 to the power of minus 2 times 2x, which gives us minus 30x x square plus 5 minus 2. Okay, so now this is our first derivative. Now, if we equate it to 0, what happens? This disappears. Okay, so we are left with minus 30x equal to 0, which implies x equal to 0. And this 0 belongs to the interval minus 2, comma 3. Okay, now let's figure out what is the value of f of x when x equal to 0. So, f of 0 will be 15 by 0 plus 5, that is 5, which is equal to 3. So, therefore, the point would be 0, comma 3. Okay, now let's figure out the second derivative. Now, our first derivative was minus 30x and we can write, take the remaining, the denominator, x square plus 5 square. Okay. Now, let's differentiate it once more. Now, this gives us uh, minus 30, <coughs> the denominator as it is, minus the numerator as it is, and the derivative of the denominator. So, 2x square plus 5 to the power of 1, and then 2x divided by x square plus 5, 4. Now, uh, you have x square plus 5, you have x square plus 5 and 1 of this gets cancelled. And now we are left with minus 30 x square minus 150 plus 3 to 6, 6 to 12. So, 120 x square divided by x square plus 5. To the power of 3. Uh, this becomes 90x square minus 150 divided by x square plus 5 cube. Now, let's remember our point was 0, 3. So, let's figure out f prime or a double prime of 0. Okay, so this becomes 1 minus 150 by 5 cube. We don't have to evaluate it, it is a negative number. That means it is concave down. That means this point 0, 3 is going to be the absolute maxima. Okay. Now what about the minima? 0 was somewhere in between minus 2 and 3. That means one of the, uh, uh, and there is no other point at which the slope is 0. So that means one of these two points, end points, is going to be the minima. So, let's take minus 2 and 3. f of minus 2 gives you what? 15 divided by minus 2 square that is 4 plus 5 which is 15 by 9. And then we have f of 3 which is equal to uh, 15 by 3 square that is 9 plus 5 which is 15 by 14. Now, is this smaller than this? So, this is going to be our minus 2 comma 15 by 14 is going to be our absolute minima f of x is equal to minus 9x by x square plus 9 in the interval minus 3 comma f prime of x is 9 times x square minus 9 by x square plus 9 square. I have written the derivative directly. You can work it out. Okay. And if we equate it to 0, we get 9 times x square minus 9 equal to 0, 
which implies x square equal to 9 which implies x equal to plus or minus 3 and both belong to minus 3 comma 3 and moreover these are the end points the end points are going to be the maximum minima so what do we do let's figure out the f of x for plus or minus 3 f of 3 is what is the function minus 9x so minus times my uh, 3 is minus 27 by x square so 3 square is 9 plus 9 which gives us minus 27 by 18 9 threes 9 twos so minus 3 by 2 okay f of minus 3 is equal to minus 9x so minus minus plus 9 threes 27 by minus 3 square is 9 plus 9 which gives us 27 by 18 which gives us 3 by 2 so here this point is 3 comma minus 3 by 2 and this is minus 3 comma 3 by 2 this is bigger than this so this is going to be absolute maximum and this is going to be absolute minimum in this case if you notice we didn't really require the second derivative at all okay ninth one f of x is equal to 2 by x square minus 1 in the interval 3 comma 5 okay now here very clearly x square minus 1 cannot be equal to 0 that means x square cannot be equal to 1 that means x cannot be equal to plus or minus 1 but importantly this plus or minus 1 doesn't belong to 3 comma 5 so we are safe so let's see f prime of x is equal to minus 4x by x square minus 1 square equating it to 0 we get minus 4x equal to 0 and x equal to 0 and this 0 also does not belong to 3 comma 5 interval what does this mean it means that the maxima and minima are the end points so we have to figure out the coordinates of the end points so f of 3 is equal to 2 by 3 square is 9 minus 1 which is 2 by 8 which is 1 by 4 okay similarly f of 5 is equal to 2 by uh, 5 square is 25 25 minus 1 is 24 which is 1 by 5 okay so which means 1 by 4 is greater than 1 by 12 so that means this is going to be absolute maxima and this is going to be absolute minima let me write it in the coordinate form so this would be 5 comma 1 by 12 this is going to be 3 comma 1 by 4 okay tenth one f of x is equal to minus 2 by x square minus 16 in the interval 3 comma 7 okay again we know that x square minus 16 cannot be equal to 0 x square cannot be equal to 16 which means x cannot be equal to plus or minus 4 and here very importantly 4 belongs to the interval 3 comma 7 that means a value which cannot be there in the uh, as the value of x is in the interval so therefore no absolute maxima and or minima okay let's look at another example third eleventh one f of x is equal to minus 3 by x square minus 4 in the interval minus 4 okay again by looking at this we know x square minus 4 cannot be equal to 0 x square cannot be equal to 4 which means x cannot be equal to plus or minus 2 but 
minus 2 belongs to minus 4 comma 1 it should not but it is so therefore no absolute maxima or minima primarily there is a discontinuity in the interval 12th one f of x is equal to minus x square by 3x minus 6 in the interval 1 comma 7 now again we know 3x minus 6 cannot be equal to 0 3x cannot be equal to 6 x cannot be equal to 2 right so again we have a situation where something that should not be the value of x is there in the interval so 2 belongs to 1 comma 7 so therefore no absolute maxima or minima okay 13th one f of x is equal to cosec 2x in the interval minus pi by 4 to minus pi by 6 now this is nothing but 1 by sine 2x which means that sine 2x cannot be equal to 0 that means 2x cannot be equal to minus pi 0 pi 2 pi or minus 2 pi which means x cannot be equal to minus pi by 2 0 pi by 2 pi or minus pi none of this belongs to minus pi by 4 to pi by 6 that means we can proceed forward okay so the derivative would be minus 2 cot 2x times cosec 2x which can be written as minus 2 cos 2x by sin 2x 1 by sin 2x none of the points at which the slope is 0 belongs to this interval that means the end points themselves are the maxima and minima so we can directly do substitution and figure out which is greater which is smaller so f minus pi by 4 is equal to 1 by sin minus pi by 4 times 2 so 2 twos and sine minus can be brought out so minus sine pi by 2 now sine pi by 2 is 1 so minus 1 which is minus so this point is going to be minus pi by 4 comma minus 1 okay f of minus pi by 6 is equal to 1 by minus sine pi by 6 pi by 6 is uh, 30 degree. so that is going to be root 3 by 2 so minus root 3 by 2 which is equal to minus 2 by root 3 which can be written as minus 2 root 3 by so this point is minus pi by 6 comma minus 2 root 3 by 3 and now we have to figure out whether this is greater or this is greater using the calculator very quickly you can figure out this and you will see that this is the absolute maxima and this is going to be absolute minimum 14th one f of x is equal to cot of 2x in the interval minus pi by 4 comma minus pi by 6 this can be written as cos of 2x by sine of 2x okay now this means that sine of 2x cannot be equal to 0 that means 2x cannot be equal to as we have seen in the previous example minus pi okay so minus 2 pi minus pi 0 pi and 2 pi which means x cannot be equal to uh, minus pi minus pi by 2 0 pi by 2 and 
Python. Right? Now, do we have any of these values in this interval? None of these points belong to the interval minus pi by 4 to minus pi by 6. Right? So that means what? That the endpoints themselves will be will be the maxima and minima. Because we cannot find a slope within this interval whether it is zero so evaluate the endpoint themselves so f of minus pi by 4 cos of 2 times minus pi by 4 by sine of 2 times minus pi by 4 2 twos 2 twos so we get cos minus pi by 2 that gives us cos pi by 2 by minus sine pi by 2. Now, cos pi by 2 is 0. So, that means this quantity is 0. So, the point is minus pi by 4 comma 0. Now, the other end point is f of minus pi by 6. So, cos of 2 times minus pi by 6 by sine of 2 times minus 5 by 6. So, 2 3s, 2 3s, which gives us cos of pi by 3 and sine minus sine of pi by 3. Cos pi by 3 is 1 by 2 divided by minus sine is root 3 by 2. So, which gives us 1 by 2 times minus 2 by root 3 to 2 cancels and we have 1 minus 1 by root 3 which gives us minus root 3 by 3. So, the point is minus pi by 6 minus root 3 by 3. So, is 0 greater or minus root 3 by 3 greater? This is greater. So, therefore, this is the absolute maxima and this is the absolute minimum 15th one f of x is equal to cosec x in the interval pi by 6 and pi by 4 now this can be written as 1 by sin x so since it is in the denominator sin x cannot be equal to 0 which means x cannot be equal to minus pi 0 and pi. None of these belong to the interval pi by 6 and pi by 4. Right? So, we are safe. So, let us do the differentiation. f prime of x is equal to this is going to be minus cos x by sin square x. Try to figure out how this derivative comes. Equal to 0 which means minus cos x equal to 0, which means cos x equal to 0, which means x equal to minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. But again, minus pi by 2 and pi by 2 does not belong to this interval, pi by 6, pi by 4. So, that means there is no point in the curve in the given interval where it is, the slope is 0. That means the endpoints are going to be the maxima and minimum. So, therefore, f of pi by 6 is equal to 1 by sine pi by 6 which is going to be 1 by 1 by 2 which is 2. So, the point is pi by 6 comma 2 and pi by 4 is equal to 1 by sine pi by 4 which is equal to 1 by pi by 4 is going to be 1 by root 2 which is root 2. So, pi by 4 comma root 2. So, which is bigger? 2 is bigger. So, this is going to be the absolute maxima in the given interval and this is going to be the absolute minima in the given interval. 16th one. f of x is equal to 2 sec 2x in the interval minus pi by 2 and minus pi by 8. 
sec 2x can be written as 1 by cos 2x which basically implies that cos 2x cannot be equal to 0 which means 2x cannot be equal to minus pi by 2 and pi by 2 which means x cannot be equal to minus pi by 4 and pi by 4 but this 2 do not belong to minus pi by 2 and minus pi by 3 interval so we are safe okay so let's take the derivative of the uh, of the function two times sec 2x is going to be tan 2x sec 2x times 2 which gives us 4 tan 2x and sec 2x okay now this can be written as 4 times uh, sin 2x by here for tan you have a cos 2x and for sec it is nothing but 1 by cos 2x so cos square 2x now equating this to 0 we get sin 2x is equal to 0 which means 2x is equal to minus 2 pi minus uh, pi 0 pi and 2 pi now do any of these belong to the interval minus pi by 2 and minus pi by 3? This does not. Minus pi also does not. 0 also does not. Pi does not. So none of these belong to the interval minus pi by 2 and minus pi by 3. Which means that there is no point on the curve in this interval where the slope is 0. That means the endpoints themselves are the maxima and minima. So therefore, f of minus pi by 2 is equal to 2 times sec 2 times minus pi by 2. 2 sec minus pi, which is nothing but 1 by cos minus pi is cos pi. Cos pi is minus 1. So, 2 times 1 by minus 1 which is minus 2. Okay. Now, the other end is minus pi by 3 which is equal to 2 sec uh, 2 times minus pi by 3 which is nothing but 2 again we can take it as 1 by cos minus 2 pi by 3 which can be written as 2 by cos 2 pi by 3 and 2 pi by 3 is going to be 2 by minus 1 by 2 which is minus 4. So which is smaller minus 4. So therefore minus pi by 3 comma minus 4 is the absolute minima and which means that minus pi by 2 comma minus 2 is the absolute maximum yes 17th one f of x is equal to 2 part x in the interval pi by 4 to pi by 3 you might feel that we have already covered this, this particular function but remember this this may be different additional and here the intervals may be different so f prime of x is equal to 2 times cot x is minus cos x square x so which gives us 2 times minus 2 by minus 2 cos x square x minus 2 by sin square x if we equate it to 0 we will not be able to evaluate this so that means the endpoints themselves are the maxima and the minima. So f pi by 4 is equal to cos pi by 4 
pi sin pi by cos pi by 4 is here 2 is also there so 2 times cos pi by 4 is 1 by root 2 divided by sin pi by 4 is uh, root 1 by root 2 yes which can be written as 2 by root 2 times root 2 so root, root 2 root 2 cancels and we are left with f pi by 3 2 times cos pi by 3 by sine pi by three. this is 2 times 1 by 2 60 degree and divided by sine pi by 3 that is going to be root 3 by 2 root 2 cancels and we have 1 by 1 divided by root 3 by 2 so that means 2 by root 3 which can be written as 2 root 3 by 3 so one of the points is pi by 4 comma 2 and the other is pi by 3 comma 2 root 3 by 3 so which is maxima is this bigger or this bigger you can use the calculator for this and figure out that this is going to be greater so this is going to be the absolute maxima and this is absolute minima okay last one 18 f of x is equal to 2 cosec x in the interval minus 3 pi by 4 to pi by 2. now this can be written as 2 by sin x sin x cannot be equal to 0 which means x cannot be equal to minus pi 0 or pi now here if you notice 0 belongs to the interval minus 3 pi by 4 to pi by 2 so therefore no absolute maxima and minima or minima so that is absolute extrema that's it bye